Hi there, my name is Bolio. I'm part of the winning team in the melanoma classification competition, and I am presenting our winning solution. Here are the Kaggle profiles of the team members. We are all Kaggle Grandmasters with multiple computer vision gold medals. The task of this competition is to use skin images to classify whether a patient has melanoma or not. The biggest challenge, uh, in my opinion, is the, the very small number of positive samples, which makes the uh, evaluation metric, the AOC metric, very unstable, especially on the leaderboard, because the leaderboard size is 10% of the training set. We tackle this challenge by using a different validation strategy than most teams. So most teams use the, uh, this year's data and the last year's data to train the models, but we also use the combination of two years data to validate the models. This is important because last year's data has 10 times more uh, positive samples than this year. So by combining the two, the percentage of positive samples are much larger, which makes the AUC metric uh, more stable. And, but we do also uh, track the, the 2020s uh, CV as well as a sanity check. And we completely ignore a single model's leaderboard score. This is because among the models we submitted to the leaderboard, we see no correlation between the leaderboard and the CV score at all, which means the leaderboard is very, very noisy. The second key to our winning is we selected the diagnosis as the model target as opposed to, as opposed to the original binary target which are benign and malignant. Uh, this is because the diagnosis is more granular than the binary target. It can give the model more information. However, in last year's competition, the diagnoses are slightly different than this year. So we used the information we found from the last year's competition website and mapped it to two years. So by combining, but after mapping, there are uh, nine different classes. So we treat it as a nine class classification problem. We trained it to use softmax loss. And when, at the predict, predicting time, we take the melanoma classes probability. Uh, for a medium sized data set like this, augmentation is very important. So we use all the augmentation listed on this slide. And I'm showing six randomly chosen uh, images, the before and after augmentation effects. So you can see the augmentations are pretty heavy. Uh, the trainings are done in a standard way. An interesting point is that we uh, we pick the best epoch based on C uh, overall CV and 2020 CV separately. So we have, in the end, we have two final ensemble. One of them optimized the overall CV and another one optimized the 2020 CV, and the first one turned out to be the winning submission. In this competition, we are, besides the images, we are also given uh, some metadata, the image level and the patient level metadata. In some of our models, we feed the metadata through two hidden layers, then concat them to the CNN features before feeding into the final, final layer. We found that using the metadata don't always help the model performance, but by adding some metadata model to the final ensemble, they provide some good diversity. So as I mentioned, our final ensemble optimized the overall CV. Uh, there are 18 single models in the final ensemble, all trained in PyTorch, and the diversity come from different backbones, mostly efficiency, and different input sizes. The four of the 18 models use the metadata. Uh, lastly, I'm showing the scores of our best single models as well as the scores of the, the final ensemble submission. Thank you very much.